Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to connect to an instance we just created using uh, VNC so that we get a graphical user interface. Uh, so after some time you will instance will come online. Uh, you will see that the state will change to running. At that point your instance is fully available and you can log in into it. Now to do that we need to know the instances uh, IP address. So as I, you can see, we can choose an instance and it will show us the IP address of this instance. In this particular case, for mine, it is uh, 54.237.195 and 221. Your instance, of course, will have uh, a different IP address. Uh, other things that uh, we can see here is that the key pair uh, that we need to use to connect to this instance is ECE1779 underscore video underscore demo or you know whichever key pair you you assigned. So um, at this point what we need to do is we need to open a shell. Uh, this assumes that you're using um, either um, uh, a Mac or, or you know a Linux machine or that you installed Sigwin uh, on your Windows machine. If you're using uh, Potty on Windows, uh, you're going to have to do a similar process um, where you basically tell Potty uh, where the keys are. And uh, uh, we're also going to set up a tunnel, so you'll have to do that. So this process is slightly different in, in Potty. Frankly, I find that Syncwin in Windows works best. Uh, so if you're using the shell, uh, so move to your uh, home directory where you should have a directory under uh, .ssh and here is where all your keys uh, leave. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move the key uh, pair that, that we downloaded, um, in my case it's under downloads, um, and we need to um, move it uh, to, this, to this directory. Now, once uh, the key is available here, uh, you'll notice that it is copied with uh, read permissions uh, open to uh, the group and the world. Um, you need to change these permissions, or otherwise SSH will actually refuse uh, to use the key. So to do that, um, in again, uh, Linux um, Sigwin environment, you use the change mod command and we're going to set it to 400 uh, which basically means that um, only you will have uh, read permissions as, as you can see. Once we do that we switch back to the main directory and at this point we are actually ready to connect. Now um, what we'll do is we'll use SSH and we'll use a certificate, I mean the certificate that we just created as a means of connecting. Uh, we'll also create a tunnel for our VNC client to connect. So um, requirement for you know the next part of this tutorial is that you have obviously both SSH as well as a VNC client. If you are missing one of these requirements, stop this tutorial at this point and install uh, their requirements. So now again, we're assuming you have SSH and a VNC clients. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to connect to our um, our instance. We use the SSH-I uh, modifier to tell it that we are actually um, going to be using um, um, a, a key, an existing key, and we just give it uh, the name of the key we selected. Uh, we then specify that we're going to connect as user Ubuntu, uh, which is the default user for this key, and uh, the machine to which we're going to connect, which is 54.237.195.221 in, in my case. As I said earlier, um, you will have a different, a different uh, machine. And we can connect that way. Uh, in, in the first time you do that, it will tell you to, to please, you know, accept um, the remote, the public key of uh, the remote machine that we're connecting to. And after we've done that, we've actually managed to connect. You'll see that, um, you know, the prompt 
would have changed. Now this is all you need to do if what you want is um, a, you know just a, a shell, um, a text-based shell. On the other hand, if you want to to be able to connect using VNC, we need to create a, a way for VNC client to reach um, our, our our instance. And since our instance has a firewall, uh, the only port that is available is the SSH port. So we need to create a tunnel that will um, basically encapsulate all the VNC traffic from our machine to the instance. Um, that has to be done once you s when you set up the initial connection. So what we'll do first now is we'll actually exit. So we are back at our local machine and now we're ready to set up the tunnel. So I'll just recreate uh, our uh, initial, you know, basically SSH connection. Here active, you can see we're using uh, the same key, we're connecting to the same machine. And the way you create the tunnel is by using uh, the dash L um, option. As uh, Sigwind works, as I mentioned, you know, uh, this, this works this way for Sigwind machines, um, OS 10, as, as well as uh, basically any Linux machine. If you're using Putty, you have to use the Putty interface uh, to actually tell it to, to create a tunnel. So a tunnel will have um, two endpoints. One which is local, it's basically the entrance of the tunnel, and the second will be the exit of the tunnel. So the entrance of the tunnel, um, by default, um, we're going to set that to 5901. It's uh, what that basically says is that anything, um, any traffic sent to the current host on port 5901 will go inside the tunnel. And uh, now it will exit uh, the tunnel and uh, we need to specify a, an exit point on the tunnel. So that will be localhost, which interestingly enough is actually not your machine. At that point, localhost is the machine to which you SSH into. So in this case, that will be our, our EC2 instance. And we need to specify the port uh, to which the traffic will be delivered on, on that machine. And that is also 5901. This is the default port that VNC uses. So we just click uh, enter and it it connected. And uh, the difference is that now it actually connected with uh, a tunnel. So the next thing we need to do is we, we need to actually start our VNC client. I'm using chicken of the VNC. Uh, you can use any other client that you have. Obviously the, um, the specific instructions for it will, will change. Uh, but you know the key idea is that you create a connection and um, we are going to tell it to connect to local port, local host, um, because that's where our tunnel will be. Um, again, connecting to port 5901 and we need to actually specify a password because uh, our VNC server is password protected. A password is actually very simple. It's just ECE1779 and then PASS, you know, the first four words of password. So ECE PASS. Um, once we do that, we can click connect. And if everything has worked out properly, uh, we'll get this nice window. It takes it a little while. Uh, for the interface to shift, but you know to show, but you know as you can see, uh, now we have uh, a nice user interface into the remote machine. Um, we can open a terminal. We can see what's available there. Um, there is some software that has been preloaded into into our machine. Uh, including MySQL and MySQL Workbench. So, if for instance we want to, um, you know, just connect to the database, one way to do that is you can start MySQL Workbench. Take it a little while to start. It 
can just ignore. Yeah, there we go. I'll try to actually increase the size of the screen a little bit. Um, just minimize this a bit. There we go. Uh, to connect to the database, just click on local instance and it will ask you for a password. The password will be the same password we use for VNC. So as we said, ECE1779PAAS and we can just connect. Okay, let's just try that again. There we go. You can see there is uh, already a database there. In fact, actually, it's a database that was used for the um, for the lecture, and it has you know all the tables, and um, you know you can use MySQL password to connect to it. Um, another nice thing that's installed in the instance is the PyCharm IDE. To start it, you just type PyCharm start it in the background um, this instances are based on uh, magnetic EBSs and that's why it's taking it a bit of time to to actually start, um, but once stuff has been fetched locally, it will be actually quite fast. So PyCharm is um, probably the um, the most popular Python IDE. And uh, when it preloads, it will preload with um, the code base for um, all the database examples that we saw in class. Let me just make this a little smaller so that it doesn't occupy the whole screen. You can see, you know, it, it has everything uh, we, we saw in class, all the different, um, you know, controllers and the templates and everything called those goodies. And you can actually even start it from, from PyCharm. So I'm actually going to do just that. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can actually connect to it. So another nice goodie that's pre-installed is Firefox. So we can start Firefox. We can point it to the uh, locally running application, which uh, by default will be on port 500, 5000. I'm sorry. Uh, so at that point, you can, you know, go through all the many examples that we see in class. You know, the, this is fully functional code, and it's basically all, all complete. You can obviously modify it and test it. Um, so in this tutorial, I just re you know, summarize, you know, we, we show how you can use VNC to connect to our instance with a graphical user interface uh, by tunneling your VNC traffic through an SSH connection. Um, I also showed you that your instance is actually preloaded with MySQL, um, the MySQL workbench, and, you know, PyCharm and all the codes that we, uh, you know, went through, uh, through in, in the database lecture and tutorial as, as well as, as, as Firefox. So enjoy.